Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sharissa and today on Sharissa Tribe we'll be making Cynthia Raleigh's pattern by Simplicity 8636 and we'll be making View B. <laughs> Okay, so I went ahead and cut out all of my patterns and what you need to make uh, view B is pattern piece number one. You need pattern piece number one. You need to cut two of these on the fold. You need pattern piece number two. You'll have to cut two of these also on the fold. You need pattern piece number three and you'll need four of these, not cut on the fold. Pattern piece number four, four of these also, and not cut on the fold. You need your elastic guide, five and six, and I went ahead and cut out my elastic for it, and you'll need quarter of an inch elastic for it. You'll need pattern piece number seven, which is the front view the front of the shirt. So you need that. Let's pull this out soon. And that is cut on the fold and you just need one of these. You need pattern piece number eight. This two is cut on the fold and you'll need one of these also. Pattern piece number nine is the sleeve. You'll need two of these, not cut on the fold. And pattern piece number 10. You'll need four of these cut on the fold. Okay, so now that you have your pattern pieces cut out and you've transferred all of your marks and uh, cut your notches, we're going to uh, take pattern pieces one, two, three, and four, and we're going to go ahead and assemble them. And I went ahead and ironed on my um, my tag for to show that this is the back side. So we're going to take pattern piece one and three. And we're going to pin those together. up my notches here so we have the two notches here and then we have the two notches here and I'm just matching these up and we're going to go ahead and pin everything together Once you have one and three pinned, go ahead and pin two and four. And once you have those pinned, go ahead and take it to the sewing machine and sew down each side. So now that we have our pieces already, um, the one and three and the two and four sewn together, we're gonna take the one and three and sew the two and fours together. So just take your two pieces and sew those together. You'll be sewing the, the three and the four together. And I'll be back. So now that we have all pieces sewn together for the top, you should come out with something that looks like this. So something that looks like this here. And you should have two pieces of these. I'm going to go ahead and press open my seams and um, close them back up and then take my top to my serger and serge my... my um, seam allowance. 
So you can leave all of your seams pressed open like this and go to the next step, or you can. You can press it down, close them back up, press it down, and clean up your edges, which is what I did on mine. So I pressed all of mine going towards the back, and I uh, surged them. So once you have, choose whatever one you want to go with, do that and come back for the next step. So now that you've got everything sewn together on the top part and your edges, uh, your seam allowance clean up, go ahead and take your pieces, your two pieces, which should look like this, and put right sides together. We're going to go ahead and pin around the top. Making sure to match up uh, all of your seams. So now that everything is panned, we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and do 5 8 seam allowance around the top of the, the uh, neck part. Go ahead and press flat your seam, which I went ahead and did. Put the stitch in the front, just a 3 8 because you want to slide your elastic in there. So it's gonna be 3 eighths of an inch all the way on the front from seam to seam, and then you're gonna do the same thing in the back. You're gonna go from seam to seam, 3 eighths of an inch. I went ahead and cut out my elastic. I just pinned it to where I needed to go. Remember the shorter the shorter pieces in the back, the longer pieces in the front. You're gonna take it and you're going to uh, thread it through that casing that you just made. All right, now that I've uh, put the elastic in, this is what you should end up with. So it should be uh, gathered around just the front part and the back part, and the shoulders should be left alone. They should not have any gathering in it at all. We're gonna set this aside. We're gonna grab uh, pattern pieces seven, eight, and nine. All right, so now that we have pattern pieces seven, eight, and nine, I went ahead and marked my back piece because so, you can't tell once you put them together. So I went ahead and marked my back just to make things simple. After I surge, I will know what's back when I get ready to connect the um, top.
top pieces together. Okay, so now that we have seven, eight, and nine pinned together, we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. You need to read the room. So I went ahead and sewed my sleeves onto the shirt part. I'm gonna go ahead and press open my seams and I'm gonna surge my, I'm gonna close them back up and I'm gonna surge them and I'm gonna press everything going towards the sleeve. And when you finish that, go ahead and sew up your sides so you'll sew up from the beginning of the sleeve all the way down to the bottom and then when that's done if you um, gonna surge it go ahead and press open your seams and close them back up and surge or just press them open and leave them open it's up to you so I'm gonna do that right now and I'll be right back Okay, so what I've gotten so far on the shirt is this. So this is the sleeve, and then this is the shirt part, and then this is the other sleeve. And everything has already been sewn together. So what we're going to do now is take a um, running stitch or a gathering stitch along the top all the way around and we're going to gather the top small enough to fit this here so it has to be small enough to go around here all right so i've gathered the neck part but what i'm going to do is take my neck piece and i'm going to go five five eighths Yes, I'm gonna do a five eighths hem on it. I'm gonna press it. I'm only gonna do this to just one side. I'm not gonna do it to um, the other side. Okay, so now that we've got our top uh, hemmed, I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance down, the five eighths, the five eighths seam allowance. But I also did a running stitch to show where my seam allowance was that made it easier for me to press. So I went ahead and did that and you can go ahead and start attaching it to the top. On your top, you should have your markings for your dots. So that's my dot. So this will go with my middle shoulder seam. Like I said, you have three. So it'd be one, two, and three. This, these two will match up with your two that's on here. So one here and the other one somewhere in all of this right here. And then the third one will match up with the dot. There should also be some notches on the top yeah there's some notches on the top line those notches up with the notches that are on your shirt also Alright, so I finished sewing on the top part to the, the shirt itself, and this is how it looked. Let me 
this is how the inside of it looks. So that's the inside of it. And this is the outside of it. What I'm doing now is uh, pressing my seam allowance on my um, shirt on the sleeve. They don't give you an a actual number, so you just press it up however much you want. I'm doing about an inch. Um, so go ahead and sew it, and then we're going to work on the ruffle next. All right, so we're gonna work on the ruffle, but as far as the shirt, if you don't want the ruffle added onto it and you just want the shirt how it is, how it looks now without the ruffle on it, you can stop here now and go ahead and hem the bottom of your shirt and you're done. Um, but if you want the ruffle, go ahead and grab number 10 or number 11, depending on which one you're doing, because you could be doing a dress or you could be doing a shirt with a smaller ruffle instead of the wider ruffle. Um, grab your pieces. So all four pieces together, um, hem it at the bottom and do a running stitch along the top so we can gather it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that now. All right, so I went ahead and hemmed the bottom. I did the running stitch, uh, gathering stitch to gather and I went ahead and gathered and I went ahead and also pinned everything together. On your, um, shirt you're gonna see some dots on there so you should have transferred some dots from your pattern up on there those dots coincide with the um with the seam so you just match those seams up with the dots i did not do that i normally just put my my side seams i just normally match up this one two of the seams with my side seams and find the middle of the shirt and put the other seam with the middle of with the little notch that I made to do the middle of the shirt either way you do it is fine as long as you spread the gathers out uh, equally take this to the sewing machine and go ahead and sew this up and once I finish I'm gonna press it uh, where my seam allowance is going up to the shirt, I'm going to surge it and I'll be done. That's it. So I'll come back and show you the finished product when it's done. Hi guys. Okay, so this is the next day and at this point you should have already sewed your ruffle on and cleaned up all of your edges and everything. And now I'm going to show you the finished product. But... I would like to say this though that I am a straight dumbass because I did not pay attention to how I cut my pattern um, and I end up making a dress and I didn't notice I made the dress until after I sewed everything together and I had to take the ruffle off the bottom part of the shirt and I had to put I didn't take anything else loose I just um, took the ruffle off and put the uh, pattern paper back on top and cut it to the shirt length and I cut it just about a half an inch to an inch longer than the original shirt and I attached the ruffle back to it so I've made so far I've made three versions of this shirt I've made this version which is about an inch longer about half an inch to an inch longer than the original version and I made it to all the specification except for making it just a touch longer the uh, other one that I made which was the first one that I made I made it and I didn't have the elastic for the neck and I can still go in and put it in now but I'm probably not gonna do that um, so you'll see how that look if you don't have elastic and you want to put elastic on there and then the third one I made is the actual dress part and I like that one but I don't like the dress as much only because the dress has um, it looks more like a muumu plain and simple it's just like that so <laughs> I made that and I'll show you how that look and I just when I wear that I paired that with a pair of tights and I um, wear my um, low wedges my platform wedges that has the tie up around the leg I, um, my lace up tie up wedges and I wear that with that 
and I don't wear that often only because I just made it and I've probably only worn it twice but the shirt that I've made I've made I've worn that a lot and it has been washed a lot so you'll see that it's still like because I use African print fabric and that African wax fabric and that is in like I don't know the color stays in these fabrics better than it does in other cotton so on to the big reveal so this is the shirt that we were working on And the pants that I'm wearing are the Mimi G pants. And I'll try to find the fab I mean the pattern for that when I show you when I come back on and show you the um, shirt, the the other version of the shirt that I made. So I'll be right back. Alright, so this is the second shirt, and as you can see, it has no elastic in the in the um, neckline. And it still does what it needs to do. Um, if you don't want to have it that cinched up on your neck, you can leave it without the uh, ne uh, the elastic in it. And the first pair of pants that I was wearing was the Mimi G Pants 1283. And I had made these here. And I made it out of a stretch cotton sateen. And then these pair of pants that I have on was are still Mimi G 8177. And it's these high-waisted wide leg pants see it's not a big difference from the first one but it does come a little bit higher in the front and not so long in the back but this is the actual length that you're going to get up on it So that's for that's this shirt here and I'll show you the dress I'm not gonna try that one on because that needs to be washed but this is the dress and it doesn't look like this I have a petticoat on it because I'm working on something else so this is the dress here and it has the elastic in the neck also and on me, it probably comes knee length or a little bit past the knee. So it's somewhat long and you don't need to have anything on underneath it. But I choose to wear uh, tights up under mine. So yeah, that's it. That's all three shirts. That's how it'll turn out once you make it. And hope you like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day. Peace.